Hello, I'm David Hart, Executive Vice President at the Florida Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to another edition of the Florida Chamber's Bottom Line. Our special guest today is Representative Patrick Rooney, who's the Chair of the House Transportation and Ports Subcommittee. Chair Rooney, welcome to the show. Great to be here, David. Thanks for having me. Well, look, it's great to talk about infrastructure uh, in the state of Florida. Last year, the U.S. Chamber ranked Florida number one for infrastructure of the 50 states. A Washington Post article about the same time ranked us number one for roads and bridges. I also uh, know that last year we had a record level of state funding, $10.1 billion for our State Department of Transportation. And so clearly policymakers like you understand the value of investing in our infrastructure. Um, how important is that to you? What do you see happening this session as it relates to investing in infrastructure? Well, I think, you know, uh, I, this is my first year really being involved with, with transportation and ports. So a lot of that work was done by predecessors. But obviously, I think the governor plays a huge role in determining, you know, where uh, his priorities are. And obviously, I, again, I think uh, infrastructure has been a main priority of the governor since he got into office. So I've been happy uh, really this session to pick up that ball and, and try to do uh, what we need to do, at least from a policy standpoint, to make people aware of how important our roads or bridges and you know various other structures are in this state. You know, we have uh, almost 100 million visitors to the state this year. I think it was a record. Uh, and that's on record upon record over the last several years since we've been coming out of this uh, recession. And when people come to this state, that many people, you know, we're a state of 20 million, but when we have that kind of influx of, of folks, we want them to know when they get here, they're going to be able to get around easily. It's it's a state that, you know, while people might fly in here, a lot of people do drive in here and they want to have the ease of access to get to Disney World or to get to one of our beaches or to get to South Beach or wherever it is. So I think it's hugely important that when they come here, whether it's by air, getting to one of our airports, or uh, driving here, that they know that they're not going to be facing some, you know, bridge disruption or potholes in the roads or anything like that. So um, we're, we're not. I don't think we're, we quite have the 10.1 billion this year, but we're close to that, and that again just shows I think the governor's commitment again to uh, making sure that when folks come here, either if you live here or if you're visiting here, that ease of access getting around is not going to be a problem. Chair Rooney, in 2010, the Florida Chambers Foundation put forward a pretty extensive uh, research document called the Trade and Logistics Study, and we updated it again in fall of 2013. And the premise behind the study was, uh, how can we position Florida to take advantage of new trade flows, the expansion of the Panama Canal? What steps can we take as a state um, to position ourselves as a global hub for trade? And what that research uh, showed was that we had the opportunity to create 150,000 new private sector jobs in Florida if we did certain things. And as we sit here today, many of those steps have already been taken. Um, and I know you have uh, oversight over ports, and I wonder what you're seeing in terms of investment in our ports over the last four years, and is that paying off? I, I, that's an excellent point. I think, you know, ports are one of those things, you know, most of us travel, when we travel, we're either in a car or coming via an, an airplane. Um, boat, boats are, are one of those kind of uh, uh, mystical things that people don't, you know, there they're, they're are not a lot of folks involved, except for cruising, but there, there aren't a lot of folks involved in, in bringing freight or kind of knowing what uh, ports do. Uh, I took it upon myself this, this past uh, several months to, to again, educate myself on what our ports are doing uh, to, to take advantage of what might be happening down in Panama or, or even if Cuba opens up and those types of things. So we have, nine, we have 15 seaports here. I have visited, I think, six of them over the last you know, several months. Uh, was over in Tampa for Port of Tampa, Manatee, went to Everglades, Miami. Obviously, I'm from Palm Beach, so I know the Port of Palm Beach really well. We're going to go see Jacksonville uh, next week um, to get a feel for, for what they're doing. And you're right, I, they are, they're trying to get themselves amped up, ready by, by dredging, doing some things with the berths, making them bigger. Um, um, there's rail components that need to be um, uh, finalized to make sure that once the, the, the freight gets to these ports that we have the ability, the ease of ability to get them on rails and get them where uh, that, that freight needs to go. So 
that's a crucial component, I think, uh, and we are uniquely uh, qualified here in Florida because we're, you know, we're basically a long island, but we have the, the ports on both sides of the state and up into the panhandle um, that we can be as competitive as, as really any state uh, in terms of South America uh, that I believe in, in our country. So, and, and I think, again, the money is going to those uh, upgrades that we need at the ports to take advantage of that, and I think we're going to be ready for that. We're, we often say here at the chamber, our state's blessed with outstanding geography. And to take advantage of that, uh, Florida's invested $850 million in ports over the last four years, which is outstanding, often uh, increased with a local match. But when we talk about ports and your committee's oversight, you also have oversight over airports and spaceports, which are important to Florida's uh, legacy. So can you talk briefly about that? Well, again, airports, same thing. I know there's there's uh, there's always there are virtually constant upgrades at, at airports. Again, trying to make runways longer, trying to uh, be ready for more jets, more more private jets, more uh, charter type jets, those types of things. Um, uh, you know, just general infrastructure, making sure that uh, uh, the facilities are, are meeting the needs of the folks that are traveling here. Spaceports are, are an interesting. We have two right now. You know, when when the the space shuttle program went away, uh, p I think people kind of felt like, well, that's it. You know, there, there's not going to be any more uh, opportunity to do anything w in terms of space here in Florida, and that's not the case. We're we're helping both of those uh, facilities to again be ready for the private sector and maybe shooting some people to Mars or whatever's going to happen in the future. I'm probably not going to be one of those going, but um, there there's there is a plan in place to help both our spaceports and uh, our airports, again, to make sure that we have the capabilities to, to not only deal with the folks that we have living here and when they want to go on vacation or, or go somewhere, uh, but, but more, almost as importantly, are the folks coming in here uh, and making sure that they're getting here, they're getting where they want to go, and uh, having it be as trouble-free as possible. Chairman, thank you for your work to keep Florida number one in infrastructure and all that that means to our economy. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us on another edition of the Florida Chamber's Bottom Line.